Okay, so today Chris and I are going to talk about the proper way to set up a hook grip so that you're not constantly missing on grip, which obviously was a big problem for me uh, the past year. And even before that, when I was smaller, having trouble with my hook grip, I didn't really understand um, what I was trying to accomplish. And that's why it got so frustrating for me. So the first thing you have to understand is how the hook grip's actually working. Um, you're not trying to squeeze, you're not trying to hold the bar uh, in the traditional way. The hook grip works because the friction between your two fingers and the, pat, uh, the top of your thumb is enough to keep the bar from falling out when you ha also have gravity pulling the bar down, right, to push your thumb into these fingers, right? So as long as the bar is pushing straight down, that friction, frictional force together with the gravity is gonna hold, your, hold the bar in place. When the bar starts to get away from you, right? So either your bar path, bar path uh, becomes not straight, so the bar's drifting away from you, or you're pulling the bar into you, or the bar starts to spin, like rotate in your hand, then the force is not just straight down. And so these two fingers are gonna slip off your thumb and you're gonna lose your hook grip. So any type of cue that you're getting is designed to get at that point. You have gotta have the bar moving straight up and down without spinning. The problem is everybody's built differently, right? So you have your body, the way your body's built, your, your leverages, the size of your hands, the size of your body, whether you're a big guy, small guy, whatever. You have the type of bar, right? So Kabuki bar gonna be a lot different than a Texas bar. Those bars are gonna be a lot different than a power bar that's not gonna bend at all. They're gonna be a lot different than an old shitty bar that's rusted and not gonna spin the same way, right? Um, and then you have the way that you actually pull, right? Sumo versus conventional, how wide your stance is, how wide your grip is. All these different factors are gonna influence the way the bar moves, whether it's straight up and down or not, and whether it's rotating or not. So if you're just fixated on one cue, right? No matter what that cue might be, it might not be solving your issue because there could be multiple things that are causing the bar to spin, causing the bar to move away from you. So no matter what, it's gonna be a problem solving type of experience when you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I set this grip? How do I make it exactly the same every time? You can, to some extent, strengthen your hand to the point where you're gonna be able to resist that motion away from you. But it's gonna be a relatively small extent compared to how much you can strengthen a mixed grip. Okay, so that's another reason why it might not, my, why it might get a little frustrating. Even if you're doing a ton, a ton of grip work, it's not going to be able to address underlying faults in your hook grip technique. Okay, so there are two big fault points where the bar is likely to spin, likely to move away from you. One is while you're actually setting the grip, and the second is while you're executing the lift itself. All right, so we're going to start. Chris is going to show you. Um, what's probably for most people I would say the best way to set a grip so that the bar is not going to spin not going to rotate as soon as you grab it As Ben said, I'm gonna just show you guys simply how to set up This is probably how I would show you know anybody that wanting to try hook grip uh, how to set their grip This is how I hook grip on a Texas bar at least uh, This is a Kabuki bar uh, just because we feel like switching it out uh, But I'm going to show how I would set my hook grip on a Texas bar and how I got to the point where I stopped having hook grip issues. Uh, I was able to pull 865 on a Texas bar using this hook grip setup, uh, sumo and conventional. So uh, it worked really, really well. Uh, so as Ben said, you mentioned something about uh, people lacking the strength in their hands to hold on to the bar, right? Uh, so an issue I see, uh, I've seen plenty and plenty of hook grip videos out there up to this point. And uh, a lot of these hook grip videos, they talk about people trying to set the bar as low in their as in their thumb as possible, which is true to some extent. Uh, but a lot of a lot of these videos where they're talking about this, uh, these are people that compete in meets where they use a power bar. So, which is kind of which is great if you're going to compete in a meet where you're using a power bar, then setting up your hook grip in a way where you're holding that bar as low in your thumb as possible is going to work really really well because a power bar is thicker than a deadlift bar, and there's going to be less space there in that little groove that we have for the bar to move around and to roll like Ben was talking about. So with a deadlift bar, we're gonna wanna put that bar higher in our thumb to some extent, <clears throat> uh, so that way we can get some more pressure on the outside fingers of the hand here. So the, that'd be the ring finger and the pinky finger. Uh, these two fingers are gonna be really, are gonna be largely responsible for holding that bar in place once it breaks the floor. So that being said, Real quick. Yeah. So when Chris mentioned the, the pinky and the ring figure, those are the fingers that are going to resist the motion of the bar away from you. The bar wants to spin, you're going to control it with those fingers. These fingers are just hanging out. The second the bar starts to spin a little bit, it's going to slip out. 
but you can again resist that to some extent using that pressure. Cool. So uh, I'll show. I mean, it's going to be the same conventional and sumo. I'll show it uh, conventional. So the way I like to set up here, assuming like, like I said, this is a Texas bar, going to be the bar most probably most commonly used in competition. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down. And the, the biggest thing is I want to make sure my grip is wide enough that when I go to set, when I go to set my hands, that my the angle of my arm coming down to the bar is wide enough that when I go to when I go to pull tension, the bar there, there's going to be tension on the outside of the hands. If I have my grip too narrow when I come down, it's going to be really really hard for me to set my hands in a way that's going to take pressure off the inside fingers, right? I don't want a lot of pressure directly on the thumb. I don't want to be squeeze a lot of, some people talk about squeezing down as hard as they can on the middle finger directly over the thumb. That hasn't really done a whole lot for me and it just makes hook grip hurt a lot worse. So the less I focus on putting pressure there, the better. So I'm gonna set my hands wide enough that when I come down, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to try to roll my hand under the bar. I'm gonna to try to get my thumb in front of the bar here and I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna get that middle finger over my thumb. So from here, I'm able to completely hook my thumb around the bar almost. So I'm coming down, I'm in front of the bar and then across, and then I'm just gonna hook there with the middle finger, right? So I have two fingers in front of the bar. If we come back out here and see this from a different angle. So the fingers in front of the bar, now from here, I'm gonna come here and I'm going to torque outward at the hands. I'm going to pinky pressure up into the bar as hard as I can, right? So that's going to get pressure off the thumb. It's going to get pressure off the middle finger and the pointer finger, and it's going to get the focus and the tension on the outside fingers like we were talking about. So come down to the bar, hands wide enough here, thumbs in front of the bar, hook. I'm going to get the slack out of the hands. And then I'm going to pinky pressure into the bar. Now, if you look here, I have all the slack out of my hand. The bar is low enough in my pinky finger over here that it's not going to slide once the bar leaves the floor, right? So if I was in more narrow here, right, and I was trying to do the same thing, and if my shoulder was more internally rotated, if you come to the outside here, you can see how much higher that bar is sitting on the pinky finger. So if I go to pull, see how much slide there is there? But if I'm wider, do the same thing, set that pinky pressure beforehand. Look at that. It, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit lower in my hand, not nearly as low as what we were talking about earlier with that different grip, uh, grip that we were talking about uh, being used on power bars. But again, I'm in a position where I can actually pinky pressure up into the bar, and now that bar is not gonna move at all once it's in free space. All right, so we talked about how to set the grip, right? thumbs in front of the bar, hook, pinky pressure out, right? So we've got that part down. Next things that we want, the next thing that we want to make sure, I don't think we mentioned this, is uh, we taught, I kind of mentioned like tensioning, uh, tensioning into the hand. So uh, some people call this taking the slack out of the hand, then pulling the slack out of the bar. So when we're setting up in a deadlift, we're going to segment those two things. Because if you try to pull the slack out of the bar before we've tensioned, that pinky pressure into the bar, you're gonna end up doing both at the same time and that's gonna result in a situation where the bar is gonna slide through the hand like Ben was talking about. So we come down, we wanna make sure, again, we have the grip set. I'm gonna pull the slack out of my thumbs and then I'm gonna actually pull the slack out of the bar and wedge into the bar. So again, it's gonna eliminate any chances of the bar rolling. The next big thing in the setup that we wanna focus on to eliminate any movement of the bar outside of just going straight up and down is how much space we have into the bar, right? We talk about wedging into the bar, right? Getting our hips as close to the bar as we can in a deadlift setup. That means that we need to have space here between my body and the bar, right? If I'm perfectly, if, I, if my shins are all the way up against the bar here and I go to try to wedge into the bar, what did the bar just do there? The bar rolled forward. Now, if I try to pull, that's an opportunity for the bar to roll in my hand. So I like to teach people to set up with the bar over the middle of their foot, right? I have really long femurs, so I'm honestly able to set up farther away from that. I'm a little bit past midfoot because when I come in here, I can get my knees really, really far over the bar here. 
without pushing the bar forward. But I'm wedged in, right? Look at that, the bar doesn't move at all, doesn't kick forward. I don't have to pull the bar back into me, which is another thing we see a lot that you shouldn't do. So bar over midfoot, if you're really, really long femur, short to torso, maybe a little bit farther. If you're somebody built a little bit more like Ben, maybe just a little bit closer than midfoot, right? So here, slack out of the hands, slack out of the bar, wedge in, the bar's not moving forward. I don't have to pull it back into me. Cool. Okay, so we talked about how the bar needs to not roll, how the bar path needs to be straight. You can honestly increase the friction that you have between these two thumb, these two fingers and your thumb, um, which again is going to help strengthen strengthen your hook grip. Easiest way is using chalk, right? That's pretty obvious. If you want to test this out, go try and pull something hook grip with no chalk. It's going to be a bad experience. Um, so chalk's the obvious one. There's other things you can do too, though. So um, the trick I like, there's something that rock climbers use. It's a product called antihydral. It's actually de derived from formaldehyde, but they use it to dry their skin out so that when they're rock climbing, their fingers aren't slipping all over the place. So you can use this too. Um, it's available on Amazon. You use just a very small amount for a couple nights. Um, put like a dime sized amount, rub it on your hands, go to bed wake up wash it off um, do that for two or three nights you don't want to dry the skin out too much right because then it's going to tear but if you're not sweating all over the place that's going to allow you to have a better grip on the bar chris already mentioned the pinky pressure thing so that you can resist the rotation of the bar um, and so, sorry something similar to that too uh, would be even using uh, liquid chalk before putting normal chalk on because liquid chalk i believe has like a little bit of like alcohol in yep. it uh, so you can do you can get some liquid chalk like as you're warming up for deadlifts and just do a quick round of that that'll dry your hands out a little bit kind of same concept i've been doing that lately and i think it definitely yeah. helps so uh dave tate once told me to try plunging my hands into like a bucket of ice water and then you dry it off they're, they're going to dry out a little bit when the dry cuts the air so um and then lastly you can tape the thumbs right in some federations that tape is going to be more if you get the right kind of tape it's going to be more coarse than your actual skin is so it's going to be easier to hold on to the bar um but yeah if you just keep those thoughts in mind as you're setting up at least you know what you're trying to aim for right it might be a little bit different chris mentioned for example the position over the midfoot um, is going to be a little bit different for each individual the width of your grip might be a little bit different even the cues might be different if you use different bars and that sort of thing but if you just think about okay i don't want the bar to spin i don't want the bar to move away from me it needs to move straight up and down then you're not going to have the same issues with hook grip um, now if this is a problem at like 99 percent of your max well there's a million things that could be a problem with 99% of your max. It's more for this is people who have problem like let's general say. general guidelines, right? Like yeah. you said, you know, individual leverages, things like that. This is meant to point you in the right direction, right? If you have smaller hands, you're obviously going to want to put the bar higher in your hand. If you have really freakishly long fingers, you're going to be able to get away with holding the bar low in your hand, right? But, you know, if you're somebody like Ben who's got these these fucking meat hands like trying to hold the bar really low in the thumbs isn't going to work well for him it looks like i have like pretty big hands and pretty long thumbs my thumbs are actually pretty short and doing the low thumb trick didn't work for me either so i have to hold the bar high in my hand too so it's just having a general guideline and kind of finding your individual differences from there yeah um when it comes to thumb length you know the more fingers you can get over the thumb the more friction there's going to be but not everybody has super long thumbs. They're not necessary to pull hook grip. They just do, do make it easier. One last thing, if you want to figure out, okay, well, is hook grip going to be right for me or not? Like, what's the potential for my hook grip? Real quick, cool trick you can do is if you come over and you set up for deadlift bands. So normally, you put the bands over the bearing of the bar. I'm not sure what this is called, actually. If you move this, move the band and use a little bit more band tension, put it over the bar itself. You probably need light bands, orange bands, maybe double these up. Enough though, that it's going to prevent the bar from rotating. The, the force of the band is going to prevent the bar from rotating and it's gonna encourage you to have a bar path straight up and down. It's actually gonna be easier to hold onto the bar. So what you do, warm up to the point where, okay, normally this would be really hard for me to hook grip, throw those bands on, see if you can hold on to it. If so, you know, okay, I just need to improve my technique to the point where this is going to be a viable 
way of holding on the bar. If you still can't, you know the bar's not moving, it's not rotating on you, it's not pulling away from you, you still can't hold on to it, maybe it's better that you try mixed grip. But for me, that was all kind of new stuff that I had to relearn um, once my leverage has changed, right? Because then my whole hook grip technique had to change even though I didn't realize why that was happening. So hopefully that helps some of you guys.